Dave Allen. How you doing? Thanks You're so right. much for talking to Bayloric TV yet again. Anytime. It was, uh, it was great last time. I'm looking forward to it. Well, you know what? I keep getting asked over and over and over and over again. When are you going to talk to Dave Allen? When are you going to talk to Dave Allen? And I say, well, I'd like to see the guy in person now that I'm in the UK. But um, if I can't get to see you now, the next best thing I can do is get a Skype call over to you and find out what's going on. Absolutely. We, uh, we tried meeting up, but obviously, uh, pride obligations for the both of us. Obviously, I've been hard training. You've been getting some massive interviews. So. <laughs> well, That's tomorrow it. it's Tyson and Chisora in London, so I'll probably be there at that. Yeah, and there's a uh, Tyson's very entertaining, so yeah. I'm not sure that'll be arranged to you and Derek. The war machine, like, oh, this is quite interesting. I think first and foremost, I think for someone who's only been boxing the amount of time that I have, my first amateur fight was after his first professional fight. I used to watch him on Sky on a Saturday night and think, Jesus Christ, I won't like, I won't like him chasing me down a dark alley at night time, would you? Yeah, exactly. Christ. He's a. Um, no, he looks like he's packing, doesn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a big bloke. He's a... So I used to watch him, I was a massive fan, you know. I used to think, oh, it's like all over me. Well, he's packing some serious size, isn't he? He's, yeah, he, yeah. Looks, he, looks the, he looks the part. Right. And, and at the start, he was, he was knocking everyone over. Yes, he was. Out cold. Out cold. He was taking a few of them out cold with uh, one shot. Yes. A massive fan. Uh, and he got done by McDermott in a round. Yes. I remember which, the fight. Oh, which came too early for uh, which came too early for Larry, really. Right. That came too early for him. Uh, and he, but he's been in there with John McDermott. He's been in there with Sam Sexton twice. Yeah. Sam Sexton twice. In the first fight, he only lost by a point. Right. And we're talking about a man he's lost to a point to a man who's been in there with Derek Chisora two times for the right. British. Well, beat yeah. Martin twice. That's the kind of company we're talking about. So I think people have been saying to me, oh, Larry, he's, he's not this, he's off, he's off the steroids now, he's only going to take one shot. The man is a 19 stone, 6 foot 5 human being with, with gloves on, not really big enough to keep your hands warm. Right. So I'm fully aware that if he catches me, and he catches me clean with a good shot, I'm, 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 I'm in trouble, aren't I? Right. I think, so for someone that with my experience, limited experience in the game, uh, it's, it's definitely a risky fight, I think. It's a dangerous fight. It's a dangerous fight, and it's it, it's one really that uh, I don't think many six fight novices would take with all the ten fight amateur experience behind them. Right. But with Peter being so confident about the fight, me being in such great shape, I I'm, think it, it's a very, very, very dangerous fight. I mean, a lot of people say, "Whoa, hold on." You know, the people have got fifteen fights will probably wouldn't take that. I think a lot of people just never take him at any point because he, he's a puncher. Yeah. He's a huge, he's a huge puncher first and foremost, and uh, you kind of you try and avoid him as you can. But right. I think Peter thinks I'm ready for this, and if I if I if I beat him, I can't be far off the top ten ranking in Britain. He may be looking at your speed, your movement, and power, and, and saying to well, okay, he's in shape, he's fast, he's going to be faster than if McDermott can drop him. Yeah. Then surely, Dave, if he's got his speed and his movement, will catch him. I mean, Larry's not the great. I won't call Larry the greatest boxer, but he's got one punch uh, knockout power, or he had one punch knockout power. I think a big part of him not being the best boxer in the world makes him very awkward. I've been watching him; he's awkward. Yeah, he is very. Due his lack of ability. Yeah, yeah. Due to his lack of ability, the fight is so big he jumps around the ring. He's doing all sorts. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous fight, dangerous fight. And I, I mean, I've I've spoken to some people. And they go, "Ooh, what do you think of Dave Allen taking on Larry?" Larry you're... The war machine looks a bit dangerous. Said, "Well, you know, Peter Fury. He believes that uh, he's watched Dave, so he would have seen Dave closer than we would have done. And, yeah. we, and we, the last time we've seen Dave is when he's been in the ring, and a not a very good performance. So really, I don't think we can look at that and then put that against Larry. Because if we did that, maybe we'd understand that maybe yeah. it is a good fight for Dave. But under uh, Peter's uh, guidance, we'll see the difference." I, I, if I if I hit him and his, his punch resistance just isn't really isn't all that, he will he will go to sleep. Yeah. He he won't last one shot because the one thing I've always been able to do, even when I've not been the fittest, I've always been able to punch. Right. And even in my amateur days, I've always been taking people out with one shot. Right. Since then, 
But they don't know that. They're, they're not... Um, and they're definitely not... A 35-year-old man looking like Ronnie Coleman is not going to be scared of a 22-year-old looking choir boy like this. Yeah, is it? yeah, looking, yeah. I can understand that. He's not going to see me as a threat, I don't think. He's going to think... Because I, I, don't, I'm, I'm I don't look the biggest man in the world. I'm not the most intimidating bloke either. Right. So he's, he's going to come into this fight thinking... Little boy here, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take care. Yeah, absolutely. It's still this guy confident because I definitely don't come into it. I'm not, a, I'm not as, a, I'm not John McDermott. I'm not Sam Sexton. I've never done anything that they've done. I'm not on their level. Exactly. Proved. So you're so, basically, in in some ways, untested and un- unknown. Really? Oh, of course I'm untested. I never boxed anybody. But I'll be the first to admit that. But on potential alone, I'm a future world, I'm a future world heavyweight champion. On potential, right? Like he's 35 years old now. He's he's been as good as he will ever be. I don't think the best Larry Oliver me will can beat me right now. So if he's any worse, if he's not as good as he used to be, then he's he's going to be in for a long night. So how did the fight come about? Who 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 set the fight up and how did it come about? I was meant to have a rematch with the Bulgarian. Right. With the Bulgarian, which with the shape I was in was. Not an easy fight. There's no such thing as an easy fight. Because every fight is a stressful, very stressful, grey air inducing experience. Uh, no matter who you're fighting. Yeah. But I meant to fight him in a six rounder. And I thought, get fit, get sharp. As Peter says, it's a win. It's a win. It is a win. Because I fought him last time at maybe 20% of my best. And I, I, I still think I nicked the fight. Um, he pulled out with an injury last week. They offered the fight to quite a lot of fighters, I'm told. Um, I think a big thing of that is I sparred nearly every other in the country. Have you, you know, sparred I sparred Larry? I've never sparred Larry. Or Larry wouldn't take the fight. Come on, we know this. We know this. <laughs> we know this. We know this. But uh, for all I know, Larry might not even know who I am. Right. He probably doesn't even know who I am. He probably, I'm just a name on box right to that man. Uh, and I hope Larry knows he disappointed me when he failed his drugs test and I'll be telling him this at some point because you know I never wanted to fight uh, and I always said I would never ever fight Larry Olabamiro I said that was, he, what he did was wrong and I think he should have been out of the game for good right. I had a lot of messages on Twitter private messages Twitter, Facebook get this drug cheat out of the game I don't know the man I don't know the man at all he could be the nicest man in the world yeah but he, he should be out of the game for good for what he did. But he's not. He's fighting me on Saturday night. And uh, he's going to get knocked out. Simple. Or outpointed. Or beat in any fashion. I don't mind as long as I win. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Um, the other question I keep getting asked over and over and over again. Why does he get? Why is he called the White Rhino? And they, they said every time he is asked a question... He keeps giving a different answer. So why, I'm asking again, why are you call the white rhino? Do you know why I never tell the truth on this matter? Why is that? Because it is so unbelievable, no one would ever believe it. No one would ever believe why this is. But I'm going to tell you tonight, it's 20 past 11 and you've caught me, you've caught me at a weak moment. Okay. I was on a safari. I was on a safari um, in Africa. About... Uh, this is true, right? This is the truth. Three right, years. Okay. I was on a safari. Ba- say, say, tell, tell us all, this is a Bayloric Worldwide TV exclusive. This is an exclusive. Right, Never okay. Anywhere. Right. Uh, I'm on a safari, right, with, uh, with friends. We're on a safari. Okay. So we're, we're, we're about, we're, uh, we're in the truck, sat in the back of the truck, and uh, this, this sounds so unbelievable. We're in the truck. We're, uh, we're riding around the place. We stop. We we hear we, 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 we cries of. Uh, well, I'm not sure what it were. We didn't know what it were at the time. It was a rhino. It was a pregnant rhino. Giving birth to a, a baby, a white rhino. And uh, it was in distress. So the the, the, the keepers jumped out and uh, went over. Uh, sedated the. Uh, the mother I know, and uh, they needed they needed help on one of us to uh, help deliver this rhino. Can you see now why this is unbelievable and not to believe it? <laughs> yes, quite a story. Wow. I, 
and I helped deliver a white rhino. And I delivered it. Well, I helped deliver it. I was there. And uh, the, the gatekeeper said to me, I weren't sure because his English weren't great, but he said to me, you are... You are now, uh, you are now one of these. You are, you are now a white rhino. You can see you are part of this. You, that's what he said. I'm not sure if that's what he said because his English were really poor, but I think that's what I took it. That's what he said. You white rhino. And my friends have called me white rhino for uh, since. They're my friends wow. that was there. So when yeah. I asked you the question beforehand, you said something else. I know, but that story's so unbelievable, isn't it? That's amazing. It's an amazing story. It's, uh, it's great. Right. Wow. It's, yeah, it's just it's just a shame that uh, it's not true. What? It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> I just made a lot up. I made a lot up. <laughs> I just made a lot up. Hey, we've got one joke already called Dave Allen. We don't need another. Thank you. He uh, was great. He was a great joker. Uh, what a story if it was true, though. Maybe you can edit that bit out and we'll just leave it. That, it, that oh, it. no, no. And he will put it right in there because you got all, you'll even get all the fans as well believing that I as know. well. I know. It's, uh, You're going to uh, get abused. You're going to get abused for that, you idiot. I'm going to say, my friend the other day, uh, Frankie, called Frankie Fletcher, he messaged right. me today and he said, uh, are you on about boxing? So we are doing these interviews again? Yeah. Because you need to think of some more stories. For when they asked you about the white rhino, why you call the white rhino? I said, go on, go on, give me a crack away. And, that, and I can't take uh, responsibility for that. He, uh, he came up with that story. So, so one of your mates, Mr. Fletcher, came up yeah. with that? Well, he, he, gave me the, he gave me the bare bones. I might have added uh, a lot in there, put a bit of body to the, to the story. I'll but, tell you uh, something. I'll tell you, they, 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 something they said about uh, champion liars, champion fighters, which was Muhammad Ali. So, uh... Well, I'm, uh, it's, uh, no, uh, the, the real story behind the White Rhino is really quite simple. Yeah. It really is quite simple. Um, I was actually born in Kenya. You said that one as well. Have I said that one already? Yeah, <laughs> you said that uh, one already. <laughs> You're not going to get that one out of me this time. <laughs> no, I was, uh, it was, no, actually, it was a little country outside Kenya. It was, uh, Eritrea. I was born there, and I moved to Kenya when I was three. And I'm going to try and believe that one as well, am I? And the, and the a tribe of rhinos brought me up. Yeah, right, of course, I'm going to believe that one, right? And, uh, and I came over to England, and uh, I kept my uh, I kept, I kept their name going strong. Yeah, going next, thing, next, next, thing you'll, next thing you'll tell them, you came from the planet Rhino. In, in, in a space... Don't be silly now, I'm being serious here, and you're, and you're, that's too far, that's too far. <laughs> 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 Regardless, we know you as the White Rhino. However, you got the name, you are the White Rhino. It's sticking. It's definitely sticking. It's uh, sticking. People like it. To be Absolutely. honest, when uh, when I was first born in Kenya and I was given the name, I wasn't sure about it. I really wasn't sure about the name. Right. When I was christened, when right. I was given the name. I, I don't thought, want to believe you or not now, so I'm just going to just say, right, Dave, right, Dave. Thought, no, in all seriousness, I, di I didn't think you were going to, uh, I didn't think you were going to hit off. I thought people were going to think, why are you what, what, What's your about, why are you what, what a fool. But a lot of people are liking it. Uh, it's better than, uh, it's better than some of the ones that I made up for myself anyway, definitely. Well, what are the ones you would you, which ones would you have used? I was a massive De La Hoya fan, and, um... Golden Boy? I went through, a, I went through a period of my life where I did use a tan quite a lot. Right, uh, and I, I, I use foundation now and again in uh, in year eleven. Right, and uh, and people used people used to say I used to get called my my friend uh, calls me the golden boy, so I was going to go with that. Um, for some reason I think I'm handsome, so I was I was going to go with pretty boy. Oh boy, but, but uh, other people put a stop to that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they did, didn't they? That was a sad day. That was a really bad day. <laughs> All sorts. I had all sorts of names. I wanted to be called all sorts. Gentleman oh. Dave. The Gentleman. No, that, that was from McCrory. And no. It doesn't really know. Yeah? No. no. I think yeah. White Rhino's cool. No, it's great. I'm, I'm, people call me... I get, I get Rhino Sharps now and again. White Rhino's cool. I think White Rhino's cool. I think it's a cool name. Um, I was going to ask you another question. 
The last interview we did, what what are the feedback from the people that said about what did they say about the last interview? I think people liked it. And first and foremost, um, I do a lot of inter- I do quite a lot of interviews. Yeah. Uh, over the phone, um the newspapers, I have found I from yeah. London obviously, uh, okay. well now. But uh, I, I I really enjoyed our interview last time. Right. It was I really enjoyed first and foremost I I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, yeah. the Apple London interviews are really fun. Yep. They're really fun. Right. Uh, I'm a massive James Helder fan. I'm sure right. you know James. I'm a yeah, massive James very well. Friend, I really enjoy yeah. interviews. But, and Coogan's very funny, I enjoy the interviews, but uh, this this feels very uh, this feels more like a chat. Personal. Like I'm down the pub. Yeah, which is, that's the, so that's which, why that's why I like to keep it, you know, because I think it's. Uh, I want to know more about you. I want to know who you are. I, I think you get. I think you get. Better, I think you get better answers in uh, in this kind of uh, environment. Yeah, of course. You kind of you kind of you kind of switch off and forget that people are going to be watching this later. Absolutely, and that's kind what it is. That's what it's about. So people afterwards will now watch and go say they they become a part of the conversation and they feel yeah. and fans need that. Fans need that and, and it's something that I would love to be able to do to uh, to take people like yourself, Dave, and take you round, sit down in various boxing gyms and sit down and get fans yeah. to ask you questions. Dave Allen, this is my life and talk about your or this is my fight. Talk about your your fight as a professional fighter. And you ask questions and get other inspire other fighters. That's what needs to happen. I think a lot of um, I think I think interviews like this are, um, are massive in getting people interested in in, in in me as a fighter. I know that I know that first hand. I was on Twitter um, during about a year ago, maybe just a little over. Uh, I had about thirty-seven followers. I did an interview with uh, Arthur London. I did two over the two days. I gained about six hundred followers. That's right. That's how it works. Because I uh, I had to I had to I had to look a little bit, but that's what you got to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's up, and uh, I did get some YouTube comments that were a bit uh, that weren't the nicest. Yeah, you always get them though. But it gave me a new audience of 600 people to um, that knew who I was the day before. They didn't know me. Now they know me. Now they're interested in uh, if I'm going to win or lose, and hopefully they're going to they might buy a ticket off me to come and watch the fight. More most importantly. Absolutely, absolutely. How ticket sales gone for you? It's a seven-hour round trip to Newcastle for myself. Right. You know, so it's it's not easy, obviously. Right. Um, I don't believe that my fight will be televised either, which I think I think would be uh, shame. Would be unbelievable if this fight wasn't televised because you're fighting Larry Alibamo. I mean, that that is. You got a, you got a six-fight undefeated heavyweight. Well, some people are, are saying that I'm going to I'm going to be this and that. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to win this. I'm going to win that against the former top domestic fighter in a in a it sounds as a cliche, but a real crossroads fight. It if I win this fight, Larry's Larry's finished with, and I move on to big things. I really believe if I win this fight, I'm going to move on to some big things. I move uh, near the top ten, and then who knows? I could be twelve months away from a British title fight. Yeah. Wow. If he loses this fight, he's over. If he wins it, he gives him a foothold um, to get back to where he was before. So I think it's a really interesting fight, and I think if, I'm no disrespect to the fighters on the bill. It's not, it's not the, it's not the fighters, the home fighters. It's the opponent. I've got an opponent that's a well-known domestic name. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got all to lose. Exactly. I think, I think it's a really good fight as well. I think you've got two, you've got 12 knockouts in, in 15 wins between us. Right. And you and you've got um, and I, I always bring a little bit of excitement to the ring, uh, and so does Larry. So I, I'd be disappointed if it's not televised because I think the public will miss out on a, a real good fight. I think it's going to be a good fight. I, I'm hoping, from my perspective, it's going to be one-sided. But I know one thing for definite: it, it will not go six rounds. Whatever happens, this fight cannot go six rounds. Wow. Larry does not have six rounds in the tank. But Larry is a massive puncher, and so am I. It cannot go six rounds. The fight cannot go six rounds. Wow. It's a knockout. The fight is a knockout on paper. And then Either, that, either one of you could get it. Absolutely. I think going into the fight, I think some people have made me the favourite because I'm young, I'm fresh, and I'm hungry. Yeah. And uh, and people rate me as a, you know, maybe just behind Joshua and right. Huey. Maybe maybe they rate me just behind there. People have, people have said. Right. Um, 
saying I'm going to win coming up. So I think I think the thing I've got to beat him. If I, if I am what they think I am, I beat him. Uh, a lot of people make him the favourite because he's experienced. I've never been in there with someone like that. So he's but the favourite. You, if you were to beat Larry, surely you would rank higher than a Joshua because you've beaten a guy that's better than anybody Joshua's fought so far. Oliver Mule is better than anyone Joshua's fought. That's my point. He's better than... I met Gary Connors last week and he's a great fella. He's yeah. a really nice bloke. He's had 18 fights and Larry Oliver Mule is better than anyone he's fought. Right. And he's rated 9 in Britain. Right. And that's no respect to Gary because he came last week and he's a very, he's a very talented fighter to be honest. I, was, I said to him before, I, went, I didn't lie to him, I said Gary I didn't rate you before. Really, he's, a, he's a good fighter. But if I beat Larry Oliver Mule, he's a better opponent than... With anyone rated nine downwards in the British rankings, I think. There you go. So, obviously, some uh, there's some sections and there and that they're 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 above. I think the top eight and nine. But after that, they'll be over me. Will surely I should I should shoot straight up there. I should shoot straight up. I think that's the plan behind the fight. The thinking behind it as well. So so if people want to follow you, get behind you and support you, how do they do that? I've got Twitter. It's uh, David One Two Three Allen. Yep. Um. I'm on there all the time, I post a lot of pictures, I post uh, old fight stuff, and most importantly, I don't shut up. If anyone ever asks me anything or says anything, positive or negative, I'm there. You know, I'm on it, I'm there. You're on it. You know, and again, I'd like to thank all the people uh, on there. Wayne uh, Lovett, as one of your big fans? I don't know where Wayne Lovett's gone, he, uh, he had a, he's had a falling out, I think, with the team. With uh, He's unfriended me on Facebook, Wayne, so if you're watching this, I've seen that. I've seen it. I don't know. We reinstated the other day, saying uh, saying something, and uh, I've I've, uh, I've disappeared off his friends list. Yeah. So I'm not sh- I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, it could. I, I'm not sure. I can't really answer that either. But I'm sure he is a big supporter of you. I bought the man dinner. That's all I'm going to say, Wayne. I bought you dinner. You know, I bought him dinner. You're going to do this to me? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure he's still a big fan and a big supporter of you. Um, social media is anything. He'll be watching this. So Wayne, get in touch. Uh, Mark. Mark Coomer, he's coming to the fight, he's coming from London, he's, he's coming uh, all the way from London to Newcastle. Absolutely, fantastic for that. Travelling all the way up. So after the weigh-in, I'm taking the man out for something to eat, because I really appreciate uh, I really appreciate that. It's, it's a massive effort. So, and do you have any more fans? If you looked straight into the camera, any messages for all the rest of the fans that are there before we end? Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them who are uh, on there and uh, support me, you know. They're all great, and I'm, I'm grateful for every single one of them. Um, I don't. They're not. They're not supporters and fans. They're friends. They're right. all. They're all of them are friends. Great stuff. Uh, I don't see them as supporters and fans because they're, they're friends, aren't they? I get you get to know them, and uh, I, pro- I really do. I, I properly appreciate the time. You know, someone can take the time to send me a message saying good luck or how's this going. The least you can do is uh, reply, and that'd be a message to a lot of fighters that I know that don't do that. I think. It's, it's going to take 15 seconds of your day to reply, so to make someone's day. You know, obviously the, the bigger names than me, I think I don't think it'd kill them to do so. Absolutely. That's a fantastic thing, a, a fantastic attitude to have. Dane Allen, once again, thank you so much for talking to Bayloric TV. I'm so glad I was able to grab a hold of you and get this interview on. Anytime. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully after a good result on Saturday, we'll, uh, we'll, catch, up. we'll catch up. We'll catch up. Take care. Thank you very much.